Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is AP Physics Chapter 2, Video 7. Today's topic is free falling bodies. The objectives for today are understand free fall is a motion with constant acceleration, be able to solve free fall problems, be able to graph free fall motion. This is a photo of a free falling ball. This photo shows that between each time interval, the distance traveled increases. This means that velocity is increasing. Careful measurements can show that the rate of velocity change is constant. That means acceleration is constant. If we ignore air friction and the effect due to Earth's rotation, all objects fall and rise at constant acceleration. This acceleration is called acceleration due to gravity. We use the letter G to, represents, to represent its magnitude. Since G is magnitude, the value of G can never be negative. The value of G depends on location. Near Earth's surface, G is 9.8 meters per second squared. On the surface of the moon, G is much smaller. G equals 1.6 meters per second squared. On the surface of the sun, G is much, much bigger. G equals 270 meters per second squared. Since free fall is a motion with constant acceleration, so we can use the same equation for constant acceleration to describe free fall motion. In this equation, A equals a negative G. Uh, negative means it's downward. So we simply change A into negative G to, rep to represent motion with, of free fall. Acceleration is sometimes measured in Gs. So A equals to how many Gs? You use the value of A divided by 9.8. If you are given A equals 5 Gs, that means the value of A is 5 times 9.8. Now free fall, Yt and Vt graph. This is a, a graph for an object that goes up and comes down. See, in the Yt graph, the curvature is downward. That is because acceleration is negative. As you can see from the beginning over here, the slope is a velocity, slope is positive, and it's pretty big. Then at the very uh, top over here, slope equals to zero because your velocity equals to zero. Then you turn around, so slope becomes negative and increasing again. This is corresponding VT graph. In the VT graph, you have a straight line. The straight line has a negative slope. That is because acceleration is constant. As you can see in the beginning, of the um, in the beginning of the motion, you'll have a big positive velocity. At the very top, you'll have zero velocity. Then you come down, your velocity increase in the negative direction. So at the highest point, velocity is zero, but acceleration never change. Acceleration is the same, 9.8 meters per second downward. Let's take a look at this example. One euro coin is dropped from the leaning tower of Pisa. It starts from rest and falls freely. Compute its position, velocity, and velocity after one second, two seconds, or three seconds. So here is a sketch of the problem. So you know the time equals to initial time equals to zero, initial position equals to zero, and initial velocity also equals to zero. Because that's what you are given, you can use this equation to determine its position at the corresponding time. Because you know initial position equals to zero, initial velocity equals to zero. You simply plug in the time to determine its position. To, de to find a velocity, you can use this equation V equals V naught minus V T. Again, because you know V naught and you know G and T, that's how you can figure out V. Plug in the known values to find V1 at a negative 9.8, V2 negative 19.8, and V3 negative 29.4. As you can see, its velocity is increasing by 9.8 meters per second every second because that is the equation. Next example. So you throw a ball vertically upward from the roof of a tall building. The ball leaves your hand at a point even with the roof railing with an upward speed of 50 meters per second. The ball is then in free fall. On its way back down, it just misses the railing. At the location of the building, G is 9.8 meters per second. Find the position and the velocity of the ball at 
one seconds and four seconds after leaving your hand. So again, look at a sketch of the situation. You know the initial position equals to zero because you set that equals to zero. And you can set the initial time also equals to zero. You know initial velocity is positive 50 meters per second because it's going up. With those initial values given, in order to find its position at one and four seconds, you can use the equation y equals y naught plus v naught t minus one half gt squared. Simply plug your time and those initial values in, and this is what you get. At one seconds, your position is 10.1 meters. So that is the position above the railing, above initial position. That's positive. On the other hand, y at 4 is negative 18.4 meters. That means it is below the railing, below the initial position. It's going, going downward. To find velocity, you can use v equals v0 minus gt. Plug your initial value v0 and the value of g and t. You can get this value v at 1 second is 5.2 meters per second. That means at 1 second, it's moving up. Four second is negative 24.2 meters per second. That means at four second, the bow is moving downward. Next question. Find a velocity when the bow is five meters above the railing. Since in this question, it gives you the displacement, it did not give you time. So to find a velocity, we have to use the timeless equation. V squared minus V naught squared equals negative 2GY minus Y naught. In this equation, we know v naught, we know g, we know y, we know y naught. So that's how we can figure out v. So to figure out v, you have to use square root. So you have two values, positive and negative, 11.3 meters per second. That means at y equals to 5 meters, you, the ball can go up or down. Next question, find a maximum height reached and the time at Find a maximum height, you can use timeless equation because you know at a maximum height, its velocity equals to zero. So since v equals to zero, you know v naught is 15, you know uh, y naught equals to zero, and you know what the value of g, you can figure out y max equals v naught squared divided by 2g, plug the uh, given values, you'll have 11.5 meters. To find the time, again, you can use v equals v0 minus gt because you know the value of v equals to zero. So t up equals v0 divided by g, so t equals 1.53 seconds. Question D, find acceleration of the ball when it is at its maximum height. At its maximum height, acceleration is negative 9.8. It is the constant, so it doesn't matter what point is during its motion. Acceleration is the same. This example, if you toss a ball upward with certain initial speed, it falls freely and reaches the maximum height h at a time t after it leaves your hand. Now, if you throw the ball upward with double the initial, uh, double initial speed, what is the new maximum height? The ball will reach. So maximum height equals v naught squared divided by g. In this equation, maximum height is directly related to v naught squared. That means when v naught doubles, uh, y max quadruples. <coughs> so the new maximum height will be 4h. Question 2. If you throw the ball upward with double the initial speed, how long does it take the ball to reach its maximum height? Now the t up equals v naught over g. So if v naught doubles, t up has to double. Maximum will be two meters. Next question. A rock is dropped off a cliff and it falls the first half of the distance to the ground in t1 seconds. If it falls the second half in t2 seconds, what is the value of t2 over t1? Let's see first, how do we find the time it falls? The time it falls, we can use the equation. This is really y equals y naught plus v naught t minus one half gt squared. Since 
y naught equals to zero, v naught equals to zero, so you can figure out y equals to negative one half gt squared. But because this is asking you the distance falling, so from here we can figure out t1 equals to 2h over g now this 2h represents the distance of the first half now uh, the total distance therefore would be two times that 2h will become 4h over g so what is t2 t2 is t total minus t1 so after you subtract and you can factor in square root of 2h over g you will have this expression square root of 2h over g times square root of 2 minus 1. Now what is t2 over t1? You divide the two expression, the square root of 2h over g cancels out. So you have square root of 2 minus 1. Last example. A ball is released from rest and falls the distance 2h under the influence of gravity. What is its average speed during a fall? Now, average speed for constant acceleration equals the initial plus final divided by 2. We know initial equals to 0. V naught equals to 0. V is proportional to H, right? V equals the square root of 2GH. Now, this H is actually 2H. So, equals to 2 times square root of GH. So, this equation is derived from the um, timeless equation v naught v squared minus v naught squared equal, equals to negative 2gh. And since uh, v naught equals to 0, so v squared is just square root of 2gh. So, average speed simply plug your v naught and your v in, you should have square root of gh. That's it for today.